Shoals, Indiana is one of the most underrated parts of the entire state. Abundant with beauty and a thing called a jug rock. They're so fond of the jug rock that it's actually the mascot of the high school and the people there are called jug rocks. If you go during the regular year, you're going to see this. Not much to see with all the foliage. Even with binoculars, you can't see very much of it. There is a path to the right, but it is densely covered with poison ivy. So it's not a very good idea during the regular year. But early spring and fall are fantastic times to see it. It is 60 feet tall and several, several tons. It is the only freestanding table rock east of the Mississippi. We have Spout Springs if you go out uh, on the western edge of town. It's been flowing there. People have been meeting there for over 100 years. The Indians also used it. If you turn here and go directly right on the road by it, which is also Sprout Springs Road, you find the Bluffs of Beaver Bend, which is an amazing geological feature. It's over 100 feet tall of Mansfield stone. It's littered with caves and crevices and meeting places and, and shelf overhangs. Just incredible. It's best experience and if you have the time to walk it. Very, very beautiful during the regular season. You can obviously see much more of the rock formations in early spring and fall. This is one of the biggest, uh, I want to call a bear cave, although there's no bears in southern Indiana that we know of. Very good sized cave. It's one of the bigger ones I've seen over in this area. If we cross the east fork of the White River, we're going to find some more wonderful geological formations. Lots of shelf rocks, abundant, abundant stone. Uh, the pinnacle is the largest, uh, over 200 feet straight up. House rock is amazing. It's uh, two several hundred ton blocks of sandstone uh, placed together by nature. Uh, if you go with the center, it's like a big teepee. In fact, that's what Native Americans have used and people who have come here for over 100 plus years uh, as kids and so forth. Lots of graffiti. Every time I've been here, I've found something that somebody's left behind. To the far left is a small cave-like area, very, very wet. I've never, I've been down to it, but not through it. On the right side is a one where you could walk in, but extremely wet. You'd need boots to go into it. In people's yards, there are caves just like this one. Further down the road, we find McBride's Bluff. This is where they said there was Indian treasure. In fact, Indians did populate the area. One man we interviewed said that he'd been there 73 years and he always finds artifacts like arrowheads and so forth every time it rains. In each person's yard, you see big rock formations. It's just amazing what you'll see here. And throughout here, you're going to find lots of caves that the Indians use for shelter. This is a spring in one man's front yard. 
He's actually helped the neighbors that all have spring water. This is the Indian cave uh, we were instructed to find. When you go inside a cave like this and you've never been into it, it is a little tight. Uh, it starts off not too bad, about uh, four and a half feet tall. It gets progressively smaller. If you're claustrophobic, uh, you're not going to like it very much. A lot of local people go and make note of they went through all the tunnels. There's a small tunnel to the right, very small. And you find elements of animal life here. You are not alone, and you never know what you're going to find. On this particular day, I decided to go back as far as I could. Lighting is essential, but so does a good nerve. If you're excited about uh, tight spaces, you're going to feel your heartbeat in the back of your head. What was interesting about this cave is it does have a, uh, a musty odor to it, like a lot of caves do, but it also had a lot of uh, small spiders in it. If you're afraid of small spiders, not the cave for you. As I got deeper into the cave, I actually found an area where there's a bunch of mosquitoes, and I could not figure out why in a cave that far there'd be mosquitoes. The reason was uh, because the rainwater had seeped down, and there was obviously larvae in that rainwater, and that's where they went. Not one of them tried to bite me. In a lot of caves, you expect it to open up at some point, but the further back I went, it just didn't go to any big rooms anywhere. Just more tiny crevices to crawl into. And very muddy. From here on, it's going to be a crawl, and I decided I didn't. I did not want to be a piece of mud, and that's really what this is all about. If you're going caving, go with somebody, but also bring extra clothes. I did not bring extra clothes this particular day, and I was covered. There are animal bones and things like that on the path back, so something has been through here. Caving is not your thing. Definitely the outdoors is abundantly beautiful and you won't be disappointed. Shoals, Indiana, definitely worth the trip.